Ladies and gents, what if I told you there's a secret ability you can study in Tears of the Kingdom that not only gives you an amazing looking armor set, but also lets you attack enemies without ever having to use your weapons. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do to get it. Now, you will get this as well as the armor set by infiltrating in the Yiga clan hideout, which is located right here in the Geruda Highlands location, basically very close to the nearby Skyview Tower. So you can use that to make your way below in the nearby canyon. And once you reach this big door to the hideout, you're going to notice an NPC trying to get recruited. They will be told that they missed the attire and to get it, they need that from three different branches which you will find in three different locations around the map. So the first one is going to be just south of the Temple of Time Ruins, right here in this very uninconspicuous house, surrounded by way too many spikes to not be noticeable. Once you go at the front and knock at the door, you're going to get immediately ambushed by a couple of Iga clan members. Now these are typically tougher than normal enemies, especially the smaller one, since they tend to be very agile, so I recommend either using explosives or damage over time or even like frost effects seem to work very well against them. Once defeated, you can simply head inside where you can talk to this NPC and get the mask right away. Now this doesn't have much defenses, but it comes with stealth up and it's also going to be useful to infiltrate the hideout later on. But if you pay attention to the table on the side right here at the journal, you're going to notice that it mentions the Earthquake technique at one of the pages, so keep a mental note of that. This brings us to the second location, which is right here at the Elder Foothills around the middle part. You're going to notice this opening in the side of the hill, so you can go ahead inside. Here you're gonna get ambushed once more by two members, so again take them down. Fire or ice works very well against them to basically keep them occupied. Now before you proceed, I recommend checking the rooms in the back on this level since there's gonna be a bunch of supplies including arrows that might come in handy a bit later on. But once you're done with those, you can just check the ceiling back at the main entrance and you're going to notice this gap. So use the ascend mechanic, reach the top and here you will notice the second NPC which will now give you the trousers or well the tights in this case. And you're one closer to completing the set but if you pay attention to the map in the back you will also notice the location for all their hideouts for future reference. The final one is going to be located right here in the top northeast corner of the map in a place called Akala Ancient Tech Lab but there are a couple of ways to reach it. One of them is by using the East Akala Plains Chasm, which is just south of that, and then use the depths and follow the light routes all the way, well again, northeast, until you basically reach right beneath that tech lab. Once you do that and reach the light route in the area, you can jump down and you're going to notice this like big tower that also connects to the ground up. So what you can do in this case is to go right there beneath it in the middle, use a sand, and this is going to bring you exactly in the middle of the hideout point at which they will notice you and a fight will ensue, so again take them down using the methods I just told you about. However, if you're too lazy to do any of that, you can simply go in the exact same location on the upper surface, knock at the door and it's going to give you the exact same result. So go ahead, defeat these two enemies once again and enter inside. Here you will notice Komba who's going to give you the final piece, the chest, which is now going to make your Iga armor complete. With the set complete, you're finally ready to infiltrate the Iga clan hideout, so go ahead and teleport back to the Geruda Highlands and enter the hideout. Once you knock at the door, you're gonna be accepted inside, so this is going to finish the quest and you can also go in and talk with the Blade Master. Now there's gonna be a bunch of vendors in here that sell all kinds of gear, but for now you'll want to ignore that and instead take this second room right here to the right and go deeper into the hideout. Eventually you should reach this bigger fighting room which is going to be used for one of the challenges and what you'll want to do is go in the back, take up this set of stairs upwards until you see these makeshift bridges. Just use them to reach the nearby blade master and this is basically going to give you a new set of challenges where each challenge requires you to defeat a certain number of clan members to get better and better rewards. So the first challenge is going to put you against three of these Yiga ninja enemies that if you defeat under a minute, you will gain the Yiga fabric, which you can apply to your paraglider. 
But if you go ahead and complete the second challenge against six of these enemies, you can get that Earthquake manual that teaches you the ability to use later on. Now, what makes this ability so awesome is the fact that you literally no longer need to use weapons to deal damage to enemies. All you have to do is to unequip any melee weapon, you can still keep the shields and the bow, and instead use the attack button to now charge that ability and basically just make it hit enemies. The longer you keep it charged, the longer it will travel and you can even control that with the stick. So you can basically have quite a bit of control where it lands. Now the damage on this thing is actually pretty respectable given the fact that you don't really consume any resources besides just your stamina. So that's why I recommend having two bars for this, maybe even more. The more you have, the better you can spam it and the longer it will travel. And actually you don't even have to target enemies, just use it from afar, it's still going to work really well, but you will have to manually control it. If however you do target the enemy, it's going to travel right to it, so you don't really have to worry about anything. Even against one of these Hinox enemies, it managed quite well and deals really good damage without consuming any other resource besides this. Now of course these are not the only rewards, if you go back at the hideout, which you can at any point by just using the same armor, you can complete the last challenge by defeating 9 Giga Masters, and this is going to give you the lightning helmet. This immediately makes you lightning proof, so if you happen to be in a thunderstorm and have some metal equipped, you're no longer gonna get damaged by the lightning strikes, which will happen quite often. Plus it looks really awesome if you like the aesthetic. The second thing is to pay attention to the vendors at the main entrance, because they sell some really powerful items. So one of them are these spikes, one of them sells you this overwhelming shield spike thingy that you can buy for 100 rupees and then immediately combine or fuse to one of your existing shields. Do however keep in mind that this will not extend the durability of a low shield for example, it's just that it adds some damage reflection back when the enemy attacks it, it's still going to break just as fast. By far my favorite here is the 8 fold long blade which is kinda like a katana except it also does this wind shear, so it kinda creates a slice that travels for a pretty good distance. You can even combine this with some of the ice horns that you'll get in the game to basically freeze enemies from pretty far away, especially against the Yiga clan, this is like the best I guess because it just completely freezes them and then one shots them in one single hit, an amazing overall weapon, I just kinda wished it lasted a bit longer. Also great here and definitely worth it is the duplex bow, it's going to cost 88 rupees but it comes with another unique ability to basically send two arrows instead of just one every time you shoot with it. And not only does this work with the arrows, it only consumes one of them by shooting two at the same time, but it also works with fusion. So let's say for example I have four fire fruits, if I combine this with an arrow, I actually send two of them with a fire imbuement, except it only consumes one fire fruit. Or even better, I only have one ice fruit, but in this case, if I fuse, I can actually send two arrows with the same imbuement. Now there's going to be one item that I heavily discourage you from buying, which is this kind of like awful contraption with spikes and three wheels. It costs 999 rupees, so I took the bullet for you to show you how it works. It's basically crap, you can just build this on your own without having to spend that much money, and the spikes on the sides and the front barely do anything, they don't even deal that much damage, so just ignore it and focus on something else. Otherwise, this is pretty much it, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.